Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to do a little review of the transformations we've had so far. Now, this is picking up from when we left off um, on February 13th. We didn't get through all the slides. So if you go to your note packet, um, you can get, you can see where we left off. And it was with transformations. I think I briefly talked about it and then we were out of time. Okay, so we have three kinds of transformations. We have a stretch shrink situation. So let's say you have something like, this is a new pen, so first time to use it. Okay, so um, let's do like y equals x squared. X squared, okay. So that forms um, a vertex at 0, 0, and then 1, 1, and negative 1, 1, and then two, four, one, two, three, four. You could do a table of values. Two, four. And it makes this little parabola. I really need a piece of graph paper. Okay. Now, when we stretch it, so let's say we go y equals 2x squared, then all those outputs double. Okay, so now instead of going, you know, when you put in negative 2, instead of going up 4, you're going to go up eight. And so you're going to get a new set of points that are going to be like twice as high up. Instead of going to one, you're going to go to two. Now, two times zero is zero, so the vertex or the x um, intercept is going to stay put. And then it's going to be a mirror image because it's symmetric um, on the other side. We'll talk more about parabolas in 3.1. But see, you get this parabola that's stretched like that. Now, that's what happens. You get a stretch if in the form y equals ax squared, if a is greater than 1, you're going to get a stretch. Okay, and that's this situation right here. Now I'm going to switch to another color. This is fun. And I'm going to say 1 half x squared. So now if you look at the black parabola, the basic one, all those outputs are going to get cut in half. So when we used to go up to 4, now we're only going to go up to 2. When we used to go up to 1, now we're only going to go to 1 half. The 0, 0 stays put. And then um, you have a, the same thing happening on the other side. And so you get this shrunk or compressed parabola. It's like somebody sat on the parabola. It kind of squishes down. So that happens when you have y equals ax squared, but um, a is less than 1 and greater than 0. We're assuming a is greater than 0, okay? So that's how stretching and shrinking works. Um, we could do a similar thing with like an absolute value curve. All right, that's stretching and shrinking. And I'm going to review these um, at the end of this set of um, videos in the summary of transformations, but I'm just doing a little bit here now. Okay, so then we have reflections. Ooh, you know what? Let me go back up a minute. These were vertical stretches and shrinks. Stretch, shrink. You can have horizontal ones. So let me wait on the reflections and let me talk about the horizontal ones. Um, so let's say you have um, an absolute value curve, something like this. So there's the point one, one, there's the point one, two, three, four, and two. So it should be up a little bit higher. All right, I'll erase it. I'll put my little graph back. I really need um, some graph paper here. And this new pen is a little different. Okay, so you have it at 0, 0. This is um, y equals the square root of x. We're going to use this one a lot um, when we're doing these here. So you have 1, 1, you have 4, 2, and you could do 9, um, 3. But I'll, I'm just going to stop here. It curves like this. Pretty much like that. So if you're going to have a horizontal 
stretch, then what's going to happen is um, you're going to have y equals 1 half x. Now, a lot of times you're like, oh, no, that's not a stretch. That would be like a shrink. But it works kind of, the horizontal works opposite the way the vertical ones do. And here's why. If I make a table of values, x and y, I can put in 0 and get 0. Okay, that's going to stay put. Switch to a different color. And then I could put in 2, and that would give me the square root of 1, which is 1. So my old point that was at 1, 1 is now at 2, 1. So I have this point here. The um, starting point stays the same, but now I'm at 2, 1. Do you see how it's stretched over? Like now instead of a 1, it's twice that. So what do you think is going to happen if I put in, I want a nice number that I can take the square root of, I'd have to put in 8. Because half of 8 is 4, that I can take the square root of and get 2. So my old output that was here at 4, 2 is now at 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, is now at 8, 2. So it's stretching. This is a horizontal stretch. Mm, that curve is not drawn well. That way. So think about what you have to put in for x to get your old um, points, your old outputs, okay? You could plug in other numbers, but it's still going to do it. Try this on Desmos, and you'll see it. Um, but you can do it like this, too. So what happens if we do y equals the square root of 2x? Well, that's going to be a horizontal shrink. So hopefully this is making some sense. But if I had um, a table of values, x and y, OK, 0, 0, that's still working, square root of 0, 0. Okay, now to get a 1, the square root of 1, I would have to put in 1 half. So 1 half times 2 is 1, square root of 1 is 1. All right, so now my old point that used to be at 1, 1 is now at 1 half 1. So it like moved closer to the y axis. That's what's happening in a shrink. You're getting closer, a horizontal shrink. You're getting closer to the y axis. All right. And then if I wanted to have the square root of 4, I'd have to put in 2, right? Because 2 times 2 is 4, and square root of 4 is 2. So now I have the point 2, 2. So the old output of 2 um, was at 4, an input of 4. So I used to have the point 4, 2, but now I have the point 2, 2. All right. And then if I wanted another point, I... I don't want another point. So it's going like that. And this is a horizontal shrink. OK. Now we'll talk about reflections. So um, reflections. We're going to go back to that curve we had a minute ago. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, um, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2. When we talk about those basic um, functions and being able to graph them, that's what we want to be able to do. We want to be so familiar with them. We know what they look like. Now, you may just say, oh, this is the first time I don't, I don't have them all memorized. Well, you make a little table of values to get them, and that works. OK, so remember y is equal to the square root of x. Oops, that's not an x. The square root of x. All right. If I want it to reflect about the x-axis, then what I do is I put a negative sign or an opposite sign in front of the, the function, OK? So if I have that, then what's going to happen? My old table of values, we'll do this really quick, your table of values, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2. You can always stop the video. So. You're still getting the square root of 0. So now when you have the opposite of the square root of x, you're going to have um, 0, 0 still. But then you're going to have 1, negative 1. When you put in 1, you're going to get negative 1. 
And when you put in 4, you're going to get negative 2. So it's going to be like the opposite of those y values. So let's see, here's what it looks like. 0, 0, and then 1, negative 1, and, oh, yeah, 4, negative 2. So it'd be like down here. So it's going to be like this, and we say it reflects about, or with respect to, that's how we said it in class, with respect to the x-axis. All right, well, what if you want it to reflect about the y-axis? Well, then what you have to do is you have to have an equation that says y equals the square root of the opposite of x. Now, when you go to make your table of values, you can still put in 0, square root of 0 is 0. Okay, that's fine. But you can't put 1 in anymore because then you'd have the square root of negative 1, and that's not going to work. But you can put in a negative 1. So now I have the square root of the opposite of negative 1, which makes it a positive 1, and that I can do the square root of positive 1 is 1. Great. So what do you think I have to put in if I want an output of 2? I'm going to have to put in negative 4. And then I'm going to get the opposite of negative 4, which is 4, and square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so let's graph these, and you're going to see it. Um, I'll have to go to the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so 0, 0 still, negative 1, 1, and then negative 4, 2. And so, oops, I should have a little curve in that. All right, so when you look at the original square root, now it's reflecting about the y-axis, or with respect to the y-axis. So it's like you're flipping it over the y-axis. Okay, so let's finish this off. This is a reflect with respect to the y-axis. Okay, so those are two of the types of transformations we have. Um, the last thing we have are translations. And they're the easy ones, the easiest ones. Sorry this video is so long, but hopefully it'll help you review for the test. And that says if you have a function, let's just say we have our old one there, and if you say, so y equals the square root of x, but now let's say you go y equals the square root of x plus 5, that is going to shift up 5. So it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you're going to start there, and it's going to, it's going to be the same shape. <laughs> you could do a table of values. My shape does not look good, but it's that. It's just shifting. It's like you picked up the original curve and shifted it up five units. You could also shift down. I'll just do a smaller one. That's going to shift down two units. So you pick up your curve, you go down two units, and it's going to be like that. All right. That is a vertical. Those are vertical shifts. Now, what if you wanted to do a horizontal shift? Okay, we can do that. So if you had your, your basic one, uh, y equals the square root of x, we'll just use that again, and it's looking like this, then when you have y equals the square root of x minus 3, that is going to shift right three units. So I should have done that in purple, but go over one, two, three, start there, and it's going to be the same shape. It might not look the same, but it's just my bad drawing. Okay, now if you have y equals the square root of x plus two, that is going to shift left. So it works the opposite. The horizontal ones are working the opposite. These are horizontal shifts. Horizontal shifts or translations. Um, it'll shift left two. So you would go back two. You'd start there, and you're going to make the same curve. Oops, that did not, that did not go well. I don't know why it did not mind of its own. It would be the same shape. Okay? So that's all the time I have for this.